We start with a piece of wood that's been sanded to the best possible finish that you could put on it. I've sanded that through 400 and it is smooth as I could possibly get it. So the first step that I'm going to do here is to wet the surface with a damp cloth. Now by damp cloth, I mean one that I have saturated with water and then wrung it out totally. That is now damp. Okay, wipe the surface. This will raise any grain that's been compacted from the sanding. And then I'm going back and sand it again with the last grit that was used. Now the secret to doing this is to make sure that it's totally dry, not just surface dry, but deep dry, totally dry. I'm going to cheat on the overnight weight and use the heat gun here to dry the surface of the wood. I'm not going to let it get so hot that I can't touch it. Now I can come back and sand it with 400 again. Instead of waiting overnight, I took 10 minutes. So I only want to sand enough to take the fuzz off the wood. I don't want to actually get down and cut into new wood again. Otherwise, I'll have to do the wetting all over again. I want to be able to wet that surface without the grain raising. Now I'm going to take my same damp cloth and wipe it over the surface of the wood. One of the perils of doing this is that I raise the grain again when I put that moisture on the second time. This one did that, so I'm going to have to let that dry again. And then hit it with the 400. It's important that we get that grain all fuzzed up and sanded back down. Otherwise, as soon as we put the dye on it, it's going to snap right back up again. Let's do this one more time. Only this time I'm not going to let it dry. All that does is wet the surface of the wood and lets that water soluble dye run out a little bit easier. The dye I'm using is a water soluble aniline dye. My preference for water soluble is that it's more color fast than the uh, alcohol or oil soluble dyes. I mixed this myself um, from the packets of powder and I use about twice as much as what would normally be called for in the instructions. That's just a personal preference. So while that wood is still moist, let's just put this dye on. You know, I just thought of something. I'm supposed to be dyeing this thing black. Not to worry, the blue is on purpose. Black dye left by itself on the wood will have a tendency to form a bronze color on the surface. To prevent that bronzing, we need to color correct it. So I am using the blue for that. That will um, make sure that uh, there's no bronze on the uh, surface of the wood. So there is a purpose behind that blue. I'm going to keep rotating that just a little bit to prevent it all from running down to the bottom. And once it started to dry a little bit, um, I'm going to let it sit overnight. Okay, that's nice and dry. And now the next thing that we're going to do is burnish it with the paper towel. All that does is remove the excess off now we could go on and put another coat of blue on it if we wanted to and make it a nice dark blue, but I'm going to use the black just like we originally intended. First coat of black. I'm using these little foam throwaway brushes, except I don't throw them away. I rinse them out, let them dry out, and keep them. Then that's our first coat of black. Get the rim. The rim's going to get a lot of end grain open there. This one I'm doing the back as well sure you get a couple of coats on it and get it soaked in there really good. Now it is definitely black. Just keep rotating it a little bit and prevent all of that from running down. Now you can either let this wait until the next day or again use the dryer. If you're going to use a dryer or a heat gun, just apply it a little bit. Don't let it get too hot and get the, get the wet look away from it until it starts to turn a flat black and then I would let it sit for about an hour 
just to uh, make sure that it's thoroughly dry. Well, it's now been an hour, so I'm going to uh, run the lathe and I'm going to burnish it with a paper towel, just like I did with all the other. See, what that does is just get rid of all of the loose stuff that's accumulated on the surface. Stop it and do that center by hand because there's no velocity there in the middle as you go by. If you look in here real close, you probably can't see it there. There's some little white flecks in there. I'm going to give it one more application of the black. So this is the second black that it's getting. Now, if I were using a red dye or a green, maybe, um, I would want to bleach the wood first because the red dye is a little more transparent and the color of the wood tends to come through. Keep the thing spinning. Don't let it sit too long and get too hot in one place or you're going to warp that piece of wood. You might warp it permanently. Okay, that is dry and it feels dry, but I'm going to let it sit for an hour just to make sure that it's dry down inside the wood and not just on the surface. Now that is dry. I dried that with the heat gun and it sat for about an hour. And then I'm going to burnish it with a paper towel. And stop it and rub that center by hand. You should start to see a little bit of gloss coming up on it now. And now I'm going to show you how to use a thick wax buildup to accent the grain in a piece of wood. And to do that, I am going to use a black wax. If you were to purchase this from one of the woodworking catalogs, it would be called a black patinating wax. The black patinating wax and the Kiwi shoe polish are identically the same thing. The only difference is that the patinating wax has a little bit more solvent in it and it's a little softer and it rubs on easier. The advantage to using the shoe polish is that there are more colors available. Patinating wax is available in black, it's available in white, in which case it's called a liming wax. Shoe polish is available in the various browns and reds, there's blue, green, uh, ox blood, all sorts of different colors. And for this one, I'm just going to use the black. The finish on this has to be the best that you've ever put on a piece of wood. I have left a little bit of uh, torn grain right over here in the corner just to show you what happens if you don't get all of that removed. The first thing I'm going to do with this is compact the surface of the wood just as I did for applying the other wax. I've sanded this to about 400 with power and I'm going to come with the brush and give it a good burnishing. All that's doing is just smoothing the surface. I want as good a surface underneath that wax as what I could possibly get. The next step is to seal the wood so that the black wax stays in the open grain and the dyes don't bleed out into the surrounding wood. And to do that, I'm going to use deft gloss lacquer. Apply that with a paper towel that's rolled up into a little applicator and just put on a good heavy coat and rub it in well. Now get find a clean spot on there and wipe it all off. I'm going to come back with a scrub brush and hit that again. That'll make sure there's no excess lacquer built up down in the grain of the wood. And also it'll help it to dry a little bit faster. The next step is application of the wax. Any folded up piece of cheesecloth works the best for that. Get a good amount of it into that cheesecloth and then rub it onto the wood. Give it a good heavy coating. Get some more than that on there. You can start to see what's going to happen. I want to get a lot of excess built up. See, I've got a lot of wax on that. Put it on the back side too. I'm going to make this whole thing black. Now I have a good amount built up on there and I'm going to leave it set for about 10, 15 minutes. That's now dry. I can rub my fingers on it without smearing it. That's good enough. 
I am going to remove the excess wax and seal the embedded wax that's in the grain all at the same time. The finish I'm going to use is the Watco Teak Oil. Watco Oil or any other similar will work just as well. Fold up a paper towel, get it good and wet with the finish, and then wipe it on. Front and back. Got to do the back too on this one. Get a clean spot on the towel. Do it again. The thinner in the finish softens that wax and wipes off the excess. And then when I wipe it dry, it leaves the oil and varnish behind. What you'll see right now will make a believer out of you of what I said about a smooth finish. Do you see that streak right there? That's that little piece of torn grain and chatter that was left over from the turning that I didn't get out with sanding. This will accent every flaw in the piece of wood. Believe me. And there's a close-up of that spot. I was serious when I said that this had to be the best sanded piece of wood that you've ever done. This plate is another way that we can use wax to accent the grain of the wood. This one was dyed black and then the grain was filled with a wax-based gold gilt cream. And I'm going to show you how to do that. The gold that I am using is a wax-based product called Rub and Buff. It's available at most of the craft stores like Joann's or Michael's, any place that handles picture framing. Or you can go to the craft supplies or other catalogs and order it in the little jars, and it's called Gold Gilt Cream. And there are several shades of gold available. The nice thing about this, uh, the rub and buff, it's only about four bucks for this little uh, little tube. You can do several pieces with that. And it's available in a lot of other options, including platinum and silver, copper, and several other uh, shades that you might want to use. This particular one is dyed black with uh, a gold leaf on top of it. I also use antique gold a lot. It's a quick process, but it's made up of several steps and there's drying time required between each of them. And that drying time means that it's going to take several days to get it uh, totally done. Now at this point, we could have done what we did before. We could put a coat of uh, lacquer on there if we wanted to. Uh, I'm going to choose not to in this case, and let's see what happens. I have my little tube of rub and buff, and this stuff I'm going to put on with my fingers. See, that's how I'm doing it, right there. That's it. You want to know what gold finger is? You're going to discover gold fingers right here. I'm giving it a thick, heavy coat all over. Make sure that the, the wood is totally coated. Make sure we haven't missed anything. I want it totally coated. All of this gold stuff on your fingers is soluble in mineral spirits, so just a paper towel with a little mineral spirits on it will take it right off. The aniline dye, you're out of luck. Once that's on your hand, you're just going to have to wear it off. And now we're going to let this sit until it's dry, just like we did with the black shoe polish when we put that on the wood. That will take probably about 10 or 15 minutes. Now that we're gold, I can go back to the black backdrop and you can see what's going on. Well, that's now dry and I'm going to do the same thing that I did with black shoe polish and I'm going to use this Watco Teak Oil finish. Use quite a bit of it. Get on there. Start, just start wiping it off. Get it wet. Do 
do a couple of shots of this stuff. You go through a lot of paper towels while you're doing this, so get them handy before you start. I'm seeing a little bit of gold shading over here, a little bit more than I want. So I'm going to do that one more time. And let's take a look at what we've done. And there is the platter that I just made. It's a it has been dyed black and the grain has been accented with gold. So there's a lot of different things that you can do with wax besides just put on a finish that everybody doesn't think lasts very long. This has been sealed, so that's a quite durable finish. And the back is also finished. What I'll do now is go back in and uh, hollow out this center here in the bottom. And I usually leave that just like it is, as a natural wood, so that people can see what it looked like before we did this treatment to it. To a fairly high shine with sanding to 1500 grit, followed by a burnishing with a piece of grocery bag paper. We always think that going out and buying the latest high technology product may be the surest way to get a good finish. Wax is the same way. Sometimes the simplest is the best. And this particular one is just a stick of paraffin bought in the grocery store. You can use a piece of candle to accomplish the same thing. I want to run that at a fairly high speed, and all I'm doing is just applying the wax, letting the friction with the rotating piece melt that wax, Then I'm going to take a piece of towel and fold it up. Hold it against that surface. And melt it. And remove the excess. And now that natural wood has a coating of wax on it to protect it. Any finish that I could have put on this thing, whether it be lacquer, an oil, shellac, or whatever, would have changed the color of that wood. Putting the wax on it has no color change. So sometimes the simplicity of a polished wood and application of a simple wax is all that's required. To take this wax application one step further, we can use some of the prepared waxes in stick form. Work very well for small objects, again, using a weed pot. This particular combination is the Hut Perfect Pen Polish, PPP for short. It comes in two sticks. The dark stick is a Carnuba wax that contains a Tripoli compound. And the light stick is the same Carnuba wax with a white diamond compound. Again, we need a very high RPM in order to generate the heat in order to melt that wax. Just rub it along the length of that piece. Then take a paper towel, get that wax hot until it melts, and then push that melt line all the way from one end of the piece to the other. It's going to get hot. Expect to burn your fingers on this one. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the finer buffing compound. In this case, the white diamond. White diamond is somewhere about 15 to 1800 grit. Then we take a piece of clean paper towel. Again, I use a Viva paper towel because it's less likely to scratch the wood than any other brand of towel that I've run across. Pick up that line. Move it all the way across. Do that a couple of times. I want to make sure that I get all of that old wax off of there. If you really want to give it a good show, and buff it with a brush, just like you would a pair of shoes. Now that little weed pot has about as good of a wax protective coat as we can get. It has accented the grain just a little bit, 
and it has not changed the color of the wood. Let's see what happens if we do this with a darker colored piece of wood like this piece of cedar. Turning it at a fairly high speed. And then do the same thing with the white diamond. It's a little bit out of round, but not so bad that I can't do anything with it. It's sometimes kind of difficult to get down into the corners. And you can miss a little bit because we're going to take that cloth then, pick up the wet line right there, melted wax, and I'm going to push that right on out and over the side. So if I've got some little spots that I've missed, they're going to get covered up pretty well when I come back around this the second time. Find a clean spot on that paper towel again. I need to get down into that open void there and clean out the excess wax. Buff it with a brush. All wax likes to be buffed with a brush. Into these larger items, such as this plate or maybe a bowl or something like that, and we want to use a wax finish, we run into the problem of not being able to spin it fast enough in order to generate the heat to melt or stick wax. So in that case, we want to use something like one of these paste waxes. These waxes are a blending of a natural carnauba wax with paraffin or beeswax and solvents in order to create a paste that's soft enough that it can be applied directly to the wood. The one I prefer is tree wax. There's also a Johnson's floor wax. The one most commonly found in the stores is this min wax paste wax, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's a very good quality wax. Now, wood without it finished is best to be abraded. It's a natural bristle brush, fairly long bristles. It's totally acceptable to go down to the grocery store or the Home Depot, Lowe's, or similar place and buy a good stiff bristle scrub brush. Make sure that it is a natural bristle. Synthetic bristles are usually nylon, and those have sharp edges on them where they're cut, and that can scratch the wood. Natural bristle does not buff the wood vigorously with that brush. That same preparation is also a good preparation for application of a wax. The, the best applicator for a wax is a piece of cheesecloth. Just fold it up. Get a good loading of the wax onto that cloth. And work it into the wood. Go with the grain, go across the grain, go around the grain. Work that paste well down into the wood. And then give it another coat. And then come back and unfold the cloth and find a clean spot on the inside of the cloth. And wipe off the excess wax. And we don't want a thick coating on. We want it down in the wood. We don't want a heavy build up on the wood. This particular wax says to wait five minutes. So we'll do that. That's set for a few minutes and our normal thing would be to come up with a towel and vigorously wipe it, right? Or to spin the ray and polish that wax. Wrong. We abrade it with a brush. Just like we'd be polishing a pair of shoes. Remember earlier I said wax likes to be abraded. It likes to be beaten on. Using the brush does several things. It removes the excess wax that's down in the pores of the wood or in the grain of the wood. 
Can it also smooth that wax out into a very thin layer? Remember that when applying wax, thinner is better. The thick wax is the one that gets dull, water spots easily, turns a milky white looking color with age. That piece now has a wax finish on it. I can leave that for a day, come back tomorrow, and put another coat on that. And then come back next year and renew that again. Wax needs to be renewed. And if we do it the way I've done it, we not get a heavy buildup of wax. For showing the merits of buffing, I'm going to use two weed pots. Both are made out of western red cedar. This There are several buffing systems on the market, and they're all pretty much the same. They consist of wheels that are made up of a uh, stacked series of cloth discs. And we have two abrasives. The coarsest is Triple E Compound, which is Joe's Rouge, and that is about 800 to um, 1100 grit on the same scale that is used to measure the sandpaper that we use. The fine buffing compound is called white diamond, and that is something in the neighborhood of 15 to 1800. And then the final finish that is put on the wood is a very hard carnauba wax. This is done by three wheels. The hardest wheel is used with the Tripoli compound, and that is made from discs of linen. The next wheel for the white diamond is alternating sheets of linen and cotton. And then the wax is applied with a buffing wheel that is 100% cotton. Now these particular wheels are a little different from the ones you normally see at the hardware store. The hardware store wheels are, are usually sewn in circular fashion and they are a very hard wheel. These are only held together at the center. The particular ones that I'm using here are those that are made by Beal. Uh, the only difference between the Beal system and several others that are on the market is in how the discs are attached to the mandrel. The Beal wheels have two washers and a bolt going through them to hold the discs together, and that bolt screws into a threaded hole in the end of the mandrel. The other systems use wheels that are held together by two washers with a hole through the center of them, and they slide over a mandrel rod with a nut to hold them in place. So that's the big difference. These are just easier to put on and take off. Can't do anything faster than that. I prefer to run the wheels in the lathe because I have control of the hardness through the speed. As you can see, this the wheel right now is running at about 800 RPM. It's fairly soft and fairly flexible. Easily can form through the shape of the wood. I can run it at 1800 RPM, and it's a very hard wheel. My preference is to run that wheel at about 900 RPM. It's a nice compromise between uh, too soft and too hard. The hard wheel is a grabby wheel, and it has a tendency to pick, rip these pieces out of your hand. Before we start a discussion on the buffing, let's talk a little bit about Morris tapers. Morris taper is a self-locking taper. It doesn't require a jaw bolt. It doesn't require anything to lock it into place. If the taper on the inside of the spindle and the taper on the outside of the mandrel are identical, all that is required is a slight tap to hold it in place. If those two are not a perfect match, or if the inside taper is not clean, or if the outside taper on the mandrel has bench rash on it and dings and, and marks, then it's not going to be a perfect mating fit between two metal surfaces. Then it will be necessary to put the wheel on 
and then bring up the tailstock to make sure that it stays in place. The only problem with that is you have to remove the tailstock every time you want to change the wheels. It's just been sanded to 400 grit, and this one has been soaked in a Wachter Danish oil type finish. And so you can get some idea what the difference will be in polishing these two pieces and putting a wax finish on them. The first one I'm going to do is the bare wood. I always start by dressing the wheel, and you do that with the sharp edge of a stick. And you can see what happens. It's brought up a lot of that old compound that's been in that wheel. So I'm starting off with a fresh compound every time I'm buffing. That's about how much it takes. And then I go ahead. It takes a little practice to learn how much pressure you need to put on this thing. Don't depend on this buffing wheel to do your sanding for you. Well, this is a good way to take out minor sanding scratches, but it's not a good way to take out heavy scratches or to remove tool marks or torn grain. You should always do that before you bring this thing to the buffing wheel. Always wipe these down before you take it on to the next uh, step. I'm going to do the same cleaning of the wheel before I put the white diamond compound on it. Now I'm putting on the white diamond. Running this wheel at a slower RPM, it just takes a little bit longer to get the job done. But the wheel is softer, it conforms to the wood better. And there's less of a tendency for it to take this piece of dough across the room. Pulling the pieces green buffed at about a 45 degree angle to the wheel usually helps to keep it from being thrown. <coughs> okay, that piece has now been buffed with the white diamond. I'm going to wipe it again. And I'm ready to put on a wax coat. It's really important to take the excess off here. Too much wax is always a problem. Don't put too much on. Too much wax will just smear across the surface. The objective of wax is to get on a very thin coat. Wax is one of those finishes that thinner is better. The thinner it is, the better it is. Wax likes to be abraded, and the buffing wheel does a good job of abrading it. Thinner is better. This is a good way to put on a thin finish of wax. That piece is done. If I want to do another coating of wax, I'll leave it sit overnight and come back and give it the second coating. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the other piece. Clean the wheel. Charge the wheel. And buff the wood. This piece of wood has a finish on it, so the important thing is that the finish be dry. We need to uh, always make sure that that finish has had plenty of time to cure. This is an oil finish, and it was put on by soaking the piece in a, in a bath of oil. So I'm going to let it dry for something like a week before I try any buffing on it. Lacquer also needs about a week. Anything less than that is going to be too soft, and you might to go through it. That's the last thing you want to do is to go through a lacquer film finish, so make sure you leave the lacquer on long enough for it to really and thoroughly cure. Wipe all that towel off of there. And now do the same thing with the finer grit white diamond. May get a little white powder showing up on the wood. All that means is that I've got a little bit of excess polishing compound on there. As I said before, don't depend on this to be doing your sanding for you. It's not a replacement for sanding. This is a uh, surface preparation and a finishing technique. And then wipe the surface off. Make sure that it's clean and dry and doesn't have any abrasive powder or wax on it. 
change the wheels and give it a coating of wax. It's better to use too little than too much on the wax. You'll get too much and know what happens because it'll start to smear around on the surface. And when that happens, you know you've got too much and there's not much you can do with it. Because the only thing you can do is to get the excess wax out of the wheel by rubbing the stick on it to remove the old wax. And then buff the piece with no wax on the, on the, on the buffing wheel. And if you have a big smear, then just work on that a little bit. And there are the two third pieces that have been finished. Now this one has been polished and waxed on bare wood, and this one is polished and waxed on a wood that has been soaked in Watco oil to bring out the grain color. These are both with the same wood, but just look at the, the difference. And this is the advantage of using the oil on it as it gets going with just the bare wood. <coughs> a good soaking with Watco Danish oil and buffing are two things that were made to go together. The Watco oil hardens in the wood and stiffens up the surface. And the pores of the wood have been mostly sealed with the finish. These are light woods, dark woods, and coarse open grained woods. The materials from the buffing and the wax get packed into down into the open pores or the open grain in the wood. That also happens if there is a fissure or a, any kind of a void in the wood. The solution is to scrub the wood with a stiff bristle brush to remove all of the embedded wax and materials that's in the grain of the wood, particularly if there is an opening in the wood like that. What I am using here is a brush that was made for grooming horses. It's a fairly stiff, natural bristle brush. You can also go to the Home Depot type store and buy a scrub brush, as long as it's fairly stiff bristle and natural bristles. That will also do the job. Just remove all of that embedded material, wax or tallow, that you can. On a light wood, such as this ash, you want to be particularly careful at removing everything that's embedded in the wood after using the AAA compound. For a darker wood, you want to be particularly careful after using the light diamond. For all wood, you may want to give it a brushing after using the wax. Carnuba wax itself can have a problem when thick deposits are left in the wood, in either the grain or in openings in the wood, because as with time and exposure to atmospheric moisture, it will turn a dull, milky white color. This brushing with the scrub brush will improve that wax finish on there, believe it or not. It will actually shine better from the buffing that you're giving it with this brush. This scrubbing with the brush will improve the wax surface. If the wood is being uncooperative and giving up the embedded materials, you might want to use mineral spirits uh, to soften the wax. Or in deep openings like this one, a stiff bristle toothbrush works pretty good. And sometimes you may have to use both mineral spirits and the toothbrush. For deep openings, it helps to use or a dental type pick. Now I'm just using one of these sold in the tool shop. And just get down in there and remove the wax and all of the stuff. The easiest solution to the embedded uh, materials and wax is a good finish with a Watco type oil. Bare wood is more of a problem because there is nothing on the wood to seal up those pores and they are totally open to being compacted and filled with uh, buffing compounds and wax. 